Hello everyone. In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to encrypt columns in database table using transparent data encryption. Encrypted data is a data that has been disguised so that only an authorized recipient can read it. In most cases, you encrypt sensitive data such as credit cards and social security numbers to prevent access when backup tapes or disk drives are lost or stolen, or when an intruder tries to access the data files from the operating system bypassing the access controls of the database. Note that transparent data encryption does not protect data in transit. You can use the network encryption solutions to encrypt data over the network. Factually, users have also wanted to encrypt data to restrict data access from their database administrators. However, this problem is more of an access control problem, not an encryption problem. You can address this problem by using Oracle Database Vault to control the access to your application data from database administrators. You can encrypt individual table columns or an entire table space. At column level, you can encrypt data using selected table columns. Whereas table space encryption enables you to encrypt all of the data that is stored in a table space. Be careful that you do not mix the two. For example, suppose you encrypt a table column and then encrypt its surrounding table space. This double encryption can cause performance problems. In order to encrypt data in database tables, we need to configure transparent data encryption first. So let's get started. The first step in the encryption settings is to specify the key store location and type. A key store is a protected database that holds keys and certificates. Because if you have keys and certificates and use encryption, digital signatures or SSL, then Oracle recommends that you use a key store for storing those keys and certificates. In a multi-tenant environment such as Oracle 21C, you can configure a key store for either the entire container database called United Mode Configuration or you can configure key stores for individual pluggable databases called isolated mode configuration. You can read the notes on your screen to learn a few main differences between united mode and isolated mode settings. Please note, for the sake of this demonstration, I'll choose united mode configuration. So let's open the SQL Plus. Next, connect to the container database root as a common user who has been granted the alter system privilege. Now define a location for key store by setting a wallet root parameter in the server parameter file by running this alter system command. Note the server parameter file resides in the database subfolder of the Oracle base. Next, restart the database. After a database restart, you can check the wallet root setting like this. Next, we shall specify the key store type, but first look at this illustration that shows the types of key store that Oracle database supports. Please note, for this demonstration we shall choose a software key store. A software key store is a container that stores the TDE master encryption key. So, to specify the key store type, Set the TDE underscore configuration parameter using this SQL command. Now confirm that the TDE underscore configuration parameter was set correctly. In this output, file specifies a software key store or other value can be the OKV which specifies an Oracle key vault key store. Finally, run this query to confirm that you have configured the key store location and type for the united mode. Your output should be similar to this one. After we have configured the united mode, we can now create our software key store. Remember, there are three different types of software key stores. Auto login software key stores, local auto login software key stores, and password protected software key stores. Please note, in this demonstration, I'll choose password protected key store. Both auto login and local auto login software key stores are automatically opened when accessed. The auto login software key store can be opened from different computers from the computer where this key store resides. 
but the local auto login software key store can only be opened from the computer on which it was created. The password protected software key stores are protected by a password that you create. You must explicitly open this type of key store by specifying the password before the keys can be retrieved or used. Let's now create the key store in the container database root. Run this administer key management SQL statement. Please note, key management can be performed by any user who has the sysdba or syskm privilege. After you run this statement, the evolid.p12 file which is the key store appears in the key store location. The tde folder is automatically created under wallet root if it doesn't already exist. As I have already told that a password protected software key store must be open before any TDE master encryption keys can be created or accessed in the key store. So in the next step, we shall open the key store in both the root container and the united mode pluggable databases. Let's first in the CDB root, open the key store by issuing the administer key management set key store open statement. Then with this query, confirm that the key store is open in the container database. Next, disconnect from the root container and then connect to the pluggable database. Now, like container database, also open the key store in the pluggable database. But before this step, please ensure that the PDB in which you want to open the key store is in read-write mode. You can find the status of the pluggable database with show pdbs command. If the pluggable database has other than the read write mode, then run this SQL statement which will set it to read write mode. Next, confirm that the key store is also open in the pdb by running this query. The key store is now open. Let's finally set the TDE master encryption key in the united mode software key store. After this step, our configuration part will be complete. Now disconnect from the pluggable database and then connect again to the CDB root as a user who has been granted the administer key management. Note that the key management can be performed by any member of the sysdba or syskm group. After connecting to the root container, Run this SQL statement to set the TDE master encryption key in the key store. But first, make sure that the CDB is open and in read-write mode. To find the open status of the container database, query the open mode column of the v$database view like this. So if the container database is open in the read-write mode, you can then set the TDE master encryption key. Next, confirm that the key is set. Further information about the master key is displayed with this SQL statement. Similarly, we also need to create the TDE master encryption key for the pluggable database. Remember that the key store is managed by the container database root but must contain a TDE master encryption key that is specific to the pluggable database. So the pluggable database is able to use the transparent data encryption. Next, disconnect from the root container and connect to the pluggable database once again. Now run this SQL statement to create the TDE master encryption key for the pluggable database. Finally, check that the master key is set and activated in the pluggable database. Finally, we have completed the configuration, so disconnect the database and close the SQL plus. Before we begin to encrypt data, let's first take a look at the encryption algorithms. Oracle database supports several industry standard encryption and hashing algorithms. By default, TDE column encryption uses the advanced encryption algorithm with the 192-bit key length or AES192. And for the TDE tablespace encryption and database encryption, the default encryption algorithm is AES128. To create a table that encrypts a column, you can use the create table SQL statement with the encrypt clause. This example creates a new table with an encrypted column. The salary column is encrypted using the default encryption algorithm AES192. Please note, salt and mac are added by default. Let me explain here what salt and MAC parameters are. 
sort which is a random string added to the plain text data before encryption is a way to strengthen the security of the encrypted data. Adding sort makes it harder for attackers to steal data through a brute force attack. Sort removes the one common method that intruders use to steal data, namely matching patterns of encrypted data. Adding sort requires an additional 16 bytes of storage per encrypted data value. However, if you plan to index the encrypted column, then you must use the no salt parameter to remove salt from an encrypted column. By default, transparent data encryption also adds a message authentication code to the data for integrity checking. You can bypass the check that transparent data encryption performs by using the no MAC parameter to save disk space and improve performance. No MAC parameter can save up to 20 bytes of disk space per encrypted values. Let's run the create table SQL statement to create a table with an encrypted columns. First, open Oracle SQL Developer and connect to HR user account. Note, if you need help with creating HR user, you can watch my video on how to download and install HR sample schema. In this example, the MPID column is encrypted and does not use salt, and the salary column uses salt by default. Both the MPID and salary columns will use the triple data encryption standard with the 168-bit key length encryption algorithm. Because all of the encrypted columns in a table must use the same encryption algorithm. Finally, we have implemented transparent data encryption to encrypt columns in database tables. Next, let's also test the employee table by inserting a new record into it. Please remember, each time you restart a pluggable or container database, you must manually open the password key store to re-enable encryption and decryption operations. I show you what I mean. So let's first restart the database. Wallet not open. The reason is after database restart, the password protected key store remains closed. Hence, you cannot perform encryption or decryption actions such as creating a table with encrypt clause or view encrypted data, etc. The solution is you must manually open the password protected key store both in the CDB route and locally in the united mode pdb before you can reuse it so let's open the key store In this lecture, you learned how to use transparent data encryption to encrypt individual columns in Oracle database tables. In this process, we used multi-tenant united mode to configure software key store. In the end, I would like to say if you want a weekly Oracle database advanced lecture, then you should definitely hit both the like and subscribe. Goodbye.